Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank Frederic for um, allowing me to, to speak to you uh, and uh, introduce Glide Cosmos, uh, as well as um, we'll, I'll be doing the hands-on on Glide Toucan uh, later this afternoon. So Glide Cosmos is a project I've been uh, uh, leading here in Japan. There's a, quite a, a group here. Uh, we've been working with uh, Dr. Narimatsu, uh, was developing databases for uh, quite a while now in Japan for glycomics and glycosciences. And uh, so now we're trying to incorporate everything into Glycosmos and, as well as Glyspace. So um, Frederick already introduced Glyspace, so I don't need to talk about it. Um, uh, basically, the concept, the idea is that we're all sharing our data openly, and it allows us to quality check the data that we share, make sure we have consistent information across these different portals, uh, and to um, also receive user feedback and share it among the community, uh, among the, the projects uh, and feedback to the community. So this is an overview of Glide Cosmos. It's kind of a busy slide, but we have two sections. We have this repositories section and the data resources on the bottom. Uh, so the, I'll focus on the data resources mainly in this lecture. Uh, this is a kind of an overview, similar kind of trying to give an idea of how glycans fit into the, the picture of you know, life, life sciences. So we have glycans in the center here, uh, but these are you know, um, uh, synthesized by various uh, genes, we call them glycogenes. Uh, which are translated, of course, into proteins. And these proteins may be uh, lectins, actually the lectins should be over here, uh, but they're glycoproteins. They could be glycosylated, uh, but they can also be proteins that bind to glycans. So there's this diff two different sides um, of interacting with glycans. Uh, and then there are also glycolipids and uh, various diseases and pathways uh, that we also attribute to glycans. So we, we try to encapsulate all this information through a single portal um, to, to access, to allow anyone to access this kind of information. So this is the Glycosmos web portal. Uh, the web page uh, was recently up released, uh, updated on April 1st. Uh, so you go to glycosmos.org. Uh, oh, sorry, by the way, the um, the link, I, I posted a link to this uh, these slides in the, the doc the live doc um, that's been shared to everyone. So there's a link to the PDF. Because um, I might be going a little bit fast, there's lots of information, uh, but you can have a, take a look at it uh, on your own. Well, people can't hear me. Uh, is that a problem? Should I go continue? Yes, we can hear it very well. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay so the, I, as I mentioned, we have the submission section. Uh, currently, Glytucan and Glycopost are the ones that are um, available. And then we have these different resources uh, for, that are glycan related. First, I'd like to focus on the genes section. So under Glycosmos glycogenes, uh, actually under the gene section, there's the, we have the genes section, which con consists of data, various data resources related to glycan related genes. So there's the Glycosmos glycogenes, which is an integrated uh, resource. Just a second, just a second. This, apparently yeah. people are hearing me, but not you. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. It is weird. So, wow. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I was Some on mute. <laughs> now I'm not anymore. Okay, it's, let me try, try try again. So I'm muting again, hear. so no one can hear uh, Kyoko. No, no, many people can hear both of us. Ah, yeah, because I had mute, but I, oh, I, I'll mute again. <laughs> some people just hear me. <laughs> this is weird. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so let's go continue. I'm muting again. Okay, should I put my video on? I don't know if that makes a difference. I don't know if it makes a difference, but uh, okay. Uh, so let's continue. Let's okay. see how it goes. I'm okay. muting now. <laughs> um, okay, so under the gene section, we have various different resources um, that have been focused on various aspects of glycan-related genes. So there's um, two resources developed by Narimatsu uh, under the ACGGDB portal that they've created for the Asian community. 
uh, their glycogen database and a glyco disease genes database. Um, and then uh, there's a fly, a Drosophila uh, glycan related genes, and you know, as a model organism. And then we have um, extracted some data from the lipid maps uh, database. So under this glyco genes, we've actually integrated many of these resources. So uh, the ACGG DB, DB glycogene database. Uh, fly glycodb, and actually also keg. So we have uh, the glycogen um, related genes in, in keg that uh, is also integrated into glycosmos glycogenes. So this is the list of glycos glycogenes that we have integrated under glycosmos glycogenes. Uh, we have sorted by gene symbol, uh, there's the gene ID, NCB gene ID, this is from the ACGGDB database, fly glycodb, keg, and then organisms uh, that are listed here. So this uh, table allows users to easily search for the, the information that they're looking for. So for example, we can uh, type in homo sapiens and uh, it will filter this whole list uh, to focus only on homo sapiens uh, genes, human genes. And so in here we have uh, 262 entries of human genes. If we select on a single entry, then we find this glycogen entry page, uh, which has links to uh, lipid maps uh, and GGDB as well as KEG. So um, it's a, a simple view of uh, this information that we've integrated. Uh, notice here that the, in this uh, contents, we only show the bright and lipid maps. If you go down this, the screen, then we have the glycogene database entry, which actually shows the, the glycan structures, the glycan IDs, and showing that, for example, this SD3-GAL5 uh, glycosotransferase transfers this silic acid to this glycan substrate. Uh, this is the, the kind of the, the reference, the general reaction, and then the one below here is actually been uh, experimentally verified uh, by AIST. So, and if there, there are multiple reactions that are possible for the same gene, then those will all be displayed uh, in this list. There's also a link to GGDB directly so that you can find the site like this, which has more uh, detailed information. There's a explanation. These are all manually curated information. So um, an explanation of where, you know, how it works, the general reaction, uh, ortho orthologs in mouse and rat, uh, the references to the substrates, uh, expression information in which tissues they've been found to be expressed, uh, gene ontology information, and then um, vector information where you can um, get where they actually uh, tested or experimented on this gene. Okay, so then under glyco disease gene database, this is also a manually created list of glycan related diseases. Uh, there's two types of diseases listed, uh, congenital disorders of glycosylation and lysosomal storage diseases. So uh, the list on glycosmos, uh, again, shows the same table where you can enter uh, query terms for each of these different categories, uh, but you can also go to the actual uh, GDGDB homepage. There's this, sorry, there's a link here on top uh, that will take you to the homepage, which uh, shows all diseases and they can be filtered by various uh, categories. So this is a faceted search. You can look for um, diseases that are found in uh, the GGDB uh, database uh, and or you know, this current database. Um, the CDGs, lysosomal uh, manifestations, uh, and then the, the gene ontology tree. Okay, so um, glycoproteins is one of the largest um, data sets that are being uh, incorporated by all the, gly the glyspace members. So these are under the protein section, which contains glycosmos proteins, also glycosmos lectins, uh, the glycoprotdb and LFDB from ACGGDB. Uh, and this is the list of the glycoproteins, mainly from Uniprot, uh, and also uh, linked with uh, this database called MacawDB, which I'll describe a little bit later. Uh, again, the same uh, table is shown, so you can search uh, across different uh, categories, but you can also sort by clicking on the headers. So um, initially, it'll show that this list has uh, on top these proteins, but they 
they have glycosylation sites, but the glycans have not been identified. And so they don't have gly glytucan IDs. Uh, but if you want to search for those that have glytucan IDs, just click on the header twice, and it will sort in decreasing order to show you the list of uh, proteins that have uh, lots of glycans on them, or at, at least characterized. And if you click on uh, cadherin 16, for example, uh, then it will show you this uh, the glycan glycoprotein page uh, with data from Uniprot indicating positions that have that are, that are glycosylated. There's the potential sequon, which is a very short uh, motif, and XS uh, and it's three three amino acid motif, uh, which are potential um, glycosylation sites for N glycans, and then the actual glycosylation sites that have been identified. And going down the screen, uh, we'll have this view of um, from taken from the, the Prot Vista software in Uniprot, uh, which shows that we have information from both Glycoprot DB and Uniprot identifying these sites as being glycosylated. Clicking on the, the site will show you the actual list of glytucan IDs that have been shown to uh, be glycosylate this particular uh, site. So you'll find different compositions of glycans that have been identified. So it means that one of these um, kinds of compositions have been found at some point at this glycosylation site on this protein. And these are the PubMed IDs um, and that point to the publications that reported this. Uh, well, as, you reported, as far as Uniprot is concerned. And then GlycoprotDB is the one that provides these uh, glycan uh, annotations. Then the glycosmos lectins uh, list is a, a list of lectins that um, have been taken from Uniprot that have been annotated as lectins. Uh, so this actually is just a smaller list um, of Uniprot. Uh, uh, and again, uh, we can have the, the searches here. You can search across all columns. And in this case, since the lectin, uh, there may be experiments using glycan arrays, uh, which um, studied the glycans that the, these lectins were uh, binding to. So if you click on McCall DB and uh, McCall IDs twice, then we get the list, the, the IDs of m this McCall database, uh, which I'll sh you'll see an example of later. But um, this indicates that this particular lectin was studied uh, in the CFG as a glycan array, on the glycan array, to find out which glycans um, that was found to bind to this particular lectin. There's also the Uniprot ID, uh, PDB IDs, uh, and uh, glycosylation sites as well. In this example, um, I'd like to go to this um, anti-H uh, lectin, uh, which has two glycosylation sites, and where you'll see, again, the PubMed IDs, positions uh, of glycosylation, and the fact that this is a, there's an N-linked glycan on this lectin itself. And this is the McCaw DB. Uh, uh, below, the, on, going down this, this page, you'll find uh, these glycan experiments, glycan array experiments, and the results that were um, obtained from those experiments. It's kind of an alignment of the glycans that were found to bind to this lectin. And so um, it kind of summarizes the general pattern that um, could be found to uh, be the, that the lectin could um, uh, be attracted to in, in order to, to bind. So uh, in, many, in these three different examples, these three different experiments that um, were taken in the, in the Consortium for Functional Glycomics, we see that this um, fucosylated gal uh, galactose uh, pattern uh, across all three um, experiments, so indicating that this lectin you know, uh, recognizes this pattern. Uh, also below, we have the PDB uh, structures um, for this lectin, and we have a, a viewer to a light mole. Um, I think uh, Frederic also displayed this view of, you know, so if you click on this, you'll, you'll get a new page for the actual protein structure and the glycan uh, attached to it uh, at, using the SNFG symbols. Okay, and then under Okay, so sorry. Um, going back, I'm gonna go back a little bit. So this information I mentioned here uh, that identified the glycans on the proteins. This, these are taken from the glycoprot DB. 
This was part of the ACGGDB I mentioned before, the Asian Consortium for um, Asian Consor Database, ACGGDB. So if you go to the actual um, ACGGDB entry, actually the, the home page, uh, you'll, you can go to the search menu uh, where there'll be a list of all the experiments that have been done uh, using this IGOT MS uh, uh, experimental technique to identify, identify glycosylation sites and uh, glycoforms um, where, they, where they have reported them and made them available. So if you click on all of these, all the, the checkboxes, and including the glycoform, you'll get this table uh, listing the, the genes, the, glycopro the, the protein IDs, and then the, the links to data that has glycoform information on them. It also you know, describes the, the tissues that they found this protein to be expressed. Clicking on the glycoprotdb page, there'll be uh, more uh, detailed information. So the interesting part of glycoprotdb is that not only did they identify the locations of the glycans, they, the, they used lectins to, to determine what kind of glycans might be there. So based on net lectins that are known to have a particular binding affinity to a certain glycan pattern, uh, they could guess as to what kind of glycan might be on that site. So instead of using the you know, very complex MSMS, tandem MS techniques, they use lectins. Uh, as an example, uh, as if you go down the page, if you click on uh, this in more detail, go down the page, you'll see the actual glycosylation sites and the peptide sequence and the lectins that have been shown to bind to that sequence. So they hear, for example, in this 137 to 152 uh, peptide sequence, they found many of these lectins to bind to this location. If you want to know what kind of glycans uh, these lectins bind to, uh, you can click on one of them on the name. For example, if you click on con A, then uh, Oh, sorry, actually RCA, this is the wrong, I put the wrong arrow. So if I click on RCA120, this is a ricin B lectin, and it's known to bind to galactose, uh, and you know, the three structure and the sequence information, et cetera, is all there. So indicating that the, the glycan at this position is probably galact, galact, has a galactose on it. <laughs> uh, furthermore, um, in the lectin frontier database, uh, there, it shows all the glycans uh, for which to which this uh, lectin bound. So there's a way to sort the value, sort by value. So these are all the gly the x axis are the different glycans that they used to uh, to test the affinity. Uh, sorting by values, find you can click on the the largest peak, and it'll show you the glycan that um, bound most strongly to this ricin. So we see all these galactoses at the end, uh, which gives us a hint that most likely that the position, that the glycan at this position uh, would have something like this as at that, at that site. Okay, uh, and then going on, uh, there's also the, this is the glycolipids page. So um, currently there aren't a lot of uh, lipid in, uh, data sets uh, for glycolipids, but you know, there's a lipid map structure database you know, based on the consortium for uh, lipid structures. So uh, we, we currently extracted the data from there uh, for anything glycan related. Uh, we, we show the classification at the top for all the lipids. And if you click on uh, one of these classifications, it'll show you the list of lipids that um, are in that category. Uh, this is all we have currently. If you click on the LMID, it goes directly to the lipid maps um, homepage, uh, which, which will show you the, the lipid structure and other um, uh, related meta information. But our plan is to uh, be able to link these, the glycan parts of these to glycan, uh, and also um, with the glycogenes that are known to synthesize it, uh, and et cetera. So there's lots of work left to do, but this is one of the starting points that we have for the lipids. Under the glycomes, so there's three data sets that we have that try to assess and try to identify the glycome. Uh, so the, one of the earlier uh, tools that we developed was this glycome atlas, uh, which um, is a 
which is extracted data from the, the CFG. Again, they used uh, glycomics, in, glycomics technologies to identify glycans in human and mouse species. Uh, and then recently we added zebrafish. Uh, so what this tool allows you, used to, allows you to do is to select the tissue and uh, it will display all the glycans that are, have been identified in that tissue. Uh, and conversely, if you click on the glycan itself, then the other tissues that contain that glycan are highlighted in pink. So the selected tissue is in yellow, and then the ones that have uh, the selected glycans uh, will be highlighted in pink. So it gives you an idea of um, the, the distribution of different glycans across um, different species. Then there's the LM, LM Glycome Atlas, which we just uh, published last year. Uh, LM stands for leptin microarray. So again, now we're studying, we're trying to understand the glycome using lectins uh, from uh, AIST. So we, based on the mouse uh, figure we had in Glycome Atlas, uh, there are, the tissues have been exp expanded uh, and then we have actual tissue sections uh, of for formalin fixed paraffin emitted mouse tissue sections and images of them. And by clicking on these various sections on these tissue sections, uh, you can see the, the amount of binding of different lectins on that, in that tissue. So this will give you an indication of the different types of glycans that might be found in these different sections. Uh, what's interesting is that these different sections have different, may have different glycan profiles indicating the variety of uh, glycans across different areas of even the same tissue. Okay, um, then there's the glycosmos pathways, uh, which is a, a, the section of, well actually pathways, diseases, and organisms which we lump, we lump together. Uh, under the pathways section, uh, we have two, two resources. Diseases includes uh, the glyco disease genes I've already described, also a pathogen adherence to carbohydrate database, so a pathogen database known to, of pathogens known to bind to, to glycans. And then um, a summary uh, of different organisms that have been integrated in glycosmos. So I'll describe these uh, a little bit. Uh, under the glycosmos pathways, these are um, data extracted from the Reactome uh, database. Uh, so they have, you know, it's a very um, complex but you know, very dynamic view of different pathways across uh, lots of different species. What we did was we took the glycoproteins we took those pathways that had glycoproteins in them and extracted them and stored them in glycosmos. So what you can do is, for example, go through a selected species, enter a keyword, uh, and uh, for example, we'll, we can find the pathways related to diseases of signal transduction, uh, which will give you this view uh, where you can go down uh, even further and find that there are pathways in, uh, in with diseases related to signaling of FGFR1, 2, 3, and 4. Selecting one of these pathways displays a dynamic diagram. So this is generated dynamically uh, of the pathway for that, that was selected. So um, there's a legend below, but the proteins are these round, this is a protein, this is a, a complex, and then uh, simple carbohydrate or simple um, chemical compounds are shown. ATP, ADP, uh, and clicking on one of these uh, proteins will list uh, the protein, well, this is a complex. So this, listing, this lists all the proteins in that complex. And if there's a glyco this icon next to it, that means that we have a glycoprotein page to that. So then you can go from the pathway uh, to more, to the back to the glyco glycoprotein page to find out uh, where it might be glycosylated and then find the glycan structures on them. So it, this is, in this way, we're trying to integrate uh, all these different resources that we have. Okay, and then we have also this glycomaple tool, which uh, was, is developed in collaboration with uh, Dr. Fujita in China. Uh, so he, we created these drawn pathways. So we did all this is kind of semi-manually semi done these drawn pathways, what we can do is we can take expression in data. So gene expression, glycogene expression information, RNA-seq uh, expression uh, data, for example, um, and upload them. And then it'll be, they'll, the expression values will be reflected in these pathway arrows. Uh, in this example, we also have data from HPA, the Human Protein Atlas. 
Uh, so in this particular cell type, if you select it, then it will display uh, where the higher High, highly expressed uh, genes are, which will give you an indication of you know, the kind of glycans you might expect to find in those uh, different cell types, for example. So these are just snapshots of um, the different pathways that we have. So N-glycan processing, uh, also uh, heparin sulfate uh, pathways, uh, and this is sugar nucleotide biosynthesis. So the actual how the sugar nucleotides are uh, synthesized and the genes that are related to those. Am I, I hope I'm not going too fast. <laughs> um, okay, so then we have a, a pathogen adherence to carbohydrate database. So this is a, uh, a database that has been manually curated uh, for information on pathogens, bacteria, fungus, toxins, and viruses that are known to adhere to carbohydrates. So uh, this first view, uh, it, again, is the glycosmos view uh, of the, listing the table of different species, the, the molecule that's bound, uh, ligand names, the features of ligands, target sources, you know, uh, the actual glycan sequence, and whether it binds or not. Uh, along with their PubMed IDs. Uh, unfortunately, these are not linked to GLI2CAN yet, but they should be. So we hope to be able to um, do that in the near future. Uh, but uh, as, yeah, so in this case, you can search by uh, species and, and filter down this list by different, uh, these different categories. Uh, so, for example, I tried to uh, search for corona, uh, and we find that there is a coronavirus entry, but the, the molecule that it adheres, adheres to is unknown, uh, but we find that there are glycoproteins that it, bounds, that it binds to. The actual um, page on PAC, the PACDB entry page will just, you know, shows more information about that with the PMIDs. Well, it's actually up here. But to find a more interesting example, uh, you can go to the actual homepage itself, uh, where it lists 446 uh, microorganisms, uh, and you can uh, filter by various uh, categories, uh, which are listed here. So there's diseases and species, target sources, such as organisms, cells, molecules, uh, microbial glycan binding protein, oops, sorry. Uh, the actual proteins or glycans, uh, monosaccharides and epitopes and uh, or uh, different st structural features of the carbohydrate ligands. So this is a, a manually, it's, been, it's, kind of, it's a little bit old, might need to be updated, but um, at least for many of those uh, well-known uh, pathogens, you know, that bind to glycans, you can find uh, what kind of glycans that they might bind to. Oh, there is a question about glycomaple. Um, currently, so should I go back? Just real quick. Um, the, 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 CS, the file that can up, be uploaded takes the gene ID and then the FPKM value, so basically RNA-seq, but um, it's, it's basically a gene ID and a, a number. So you can adjust the, the range of the numbers that you want to uh, display on the pathway. So it can take any uh, gene ID and a value and, and uh, display that information on the pathway. Okay, and then the, under the glycosmos organisms, um, this, so this is a, a page we, we kind of put together uh, based on organism information that we have accumulated uh, in glycogenes, glycos, glycan structures, uh, glycoproteins, lectins and pathways. And so uh, it's a, it may still need to be uh, cleaned up a little bit, but uh, at least it gives a kind of overview of the type of information that we have currently accumulated in glycosmos across different organisms. So you can search, uh, find, for example, um, which organism has the most number of glycogenes registered with it. So if you can we click on it twice, we can sort in decreasing order. Uh, and uh, you'll find that, uh, I don't know what this uh, organism is, but there's, there are many organisms that have uh, glycogen information related to it. Uh, and by clicking on the glycogen, then it will show you the list of the glycogenes that we showed earlier.
but uh, sorted or filtered uh, according to that organism. Okay, and then, uh, so I've now quickly, maybe too quickly, uh, but I went through all these different uh, data sets that we have now in uh, Glycosmos. Uh, and we also have this area called standards. So these are the, the information about standards that we tried to implement in Glycosmos, uh, which we tried to share with um, the Glyspace Alliance members to make sure that we have consistent, uh, use consistent ontologies and notations. So the ontologies that we use in Glycosmos include uh, GlycoRDF, uh, GlycoQ, which is for glycoconjugates, uh, then we, the GGDB and the GDGDB, the, the, the glyco disease gene database uses GGDonto, and then the pathogen uh, database uses pathgonto. Um, yeah, so you can find more information about, the details about these uh, by clicking on these links. And then the notations that we use, so I kind of, I skipped over the glycans on purpose because I'll be describing it later in the afternoon uh, in talking about glytucan. Uh, but in glytucan, we use this works uh, rep representation for, for carbohydrates. Uh, but uh, admittedly, the glyco-CT glyco developed by um, Willie Vanderleef and, uh, you know, many other people in this group uh, use glyco-CT. So glyco-CT is used quite often, and so glytucan also supports glyco-CT. And then the, the symbol nomenclature for glycans um, to des describe glycans graphically. So th these links uh, provide more detailed information about uh, the, these notations. And if you noticed that there's this um, question mark across, there's different areas of, of glycosmos. So this question mark by, uh, kind of, it leads to a, leads to the glyco forum uh, homepage here, uh, which is known for the, the glyco word series of, of different terms in glycobiology. Uh, so in glyco forum, there's now this glycan and database series, uh, which we've been working on this past year. Uh, so uh, last year, well, this was the first, um, in, sub, in, the first issue in this series was about glycan nomenclature and various glycan related resources. So uh, under the notation section, click on this, it'll give you the link, it'll, it'll, you can jump to this information. But there's also information, this is the whole contents of this series. We started out these nomenclature, but also uh, then we go through a, a introduction to glycos, the glycosmos portal and the Mirage, and then all these are introduction to the different databases in gly, the glycosmos portal. So uh, the glycogenes, the lectins, glycans, glycoconjugates and pathways and diseases. And there's one more um, issue remaining, uh, wait, they're waiting for me to write it, <laughs> uh, about the future of uh, glyco, the glycoinformatics and how, how we imagine um, AI and simulations and things like that to uh, take a place in, in glycoinformatics. Uh, okay, so we're back to the, the glycospose portal, the main page. Uh, I want to mention that there is a search uh, function where you can search across all these different resources. If you don't want to go to any particular resource, you can simply type in the search, uh, a keyword in the search. Uh, admittedly, it's a little bit slow, uh, so it'll, you might have to wait a, a minute or so to get the results. But um, for example, uh, as a result of looking for a foot two, which is the name of a, a glycogene, we'll find 46 entries uh, probably across different organisms that all have foot two in them. Uh, then the glycoprotein entries, and then pathway entries uh, that are also divided up into different, the different species. So if we click on the Homo sapiens pathways for FOOT2, for example, uh, it'll give you the page of the search results for searching for Homo sapiens and FOOT2, which includes uh, these biosynthesis pathways and an oglycosylation of TSR domain-containing proteins. Uh, clicking on the ABO blood group uh, biosynthesis pathway, uh, then we can again uh, show the, the pathway that is taken from reactome to, to describe how uh, this antigen is synthesized. Uh, but we are also we also provide a link to reactome itself, so you can go back to the original uh, the, the original database from where this data came from. But we do. Um, 
so yeah, so that's in, in the future plans. It should happen you know, pretty soon, actually. Uh, we also want to link to RIA as well as uh, GLI2 cans. So there are GLI cans that are um, referenced in, Re in um, Reactome, but they don't have GLI2 can IDs. Uh, so we, we need to work on uh, getting that implemented. And uh, so in the submission section, uh, I've been mentioning Glytucan a lot. Uh, so the, I'll talk about Glytucan uh, later, but there's also Glycopost, which Frederick also mentioned, uh, which is a repository for mass spec uh, data for gl both glycomics and glycoproteomics. And we are working with uh, Unicarb DR and uh, Unicarb DB to, uh, to link and annotate these spectra that are depositing Glycopost. So Glycopost only takes the mass spec, the raw data, uh, the annotations are stored as files directly, but uh, they can be parsed in Unicarb DR uh, and linked with Gly2Can to eventually be um, curated in Gly Unicarb DB. So in summary, we are attempting to integrate life science databases uh, re relevant to the glycosciences. And as a member of the Glyspace Alliance, uh, glycoproteins, pathways, reactions, etc are all shared uh, via a license requiring only attribution of the data, meaning they're all CC by 4.0. Uh, so it's all freely uh, available as long as you say that you've got it from like Cosmos. Um, and then more integrations will continue. Uh, there are lots more overlapping data that uh, will be available, meaning that there's information in, you know, in uh, Glygen and uh, Glycomus and Expacy, which can still be integrated but and they'll, they'll be overlapping with each other but we want to make sure that we have links back to the data resources uh, so that users can find the most appropriate website and database uh, that you know that they're looking for so there are lots lots of resources but it's often difficult to figure out which one is the best so we hope to be able to lead users to the most appropriate resource um, via uh, these integrations and uh, sharing through the Space alliance and of course, uh, this is all dependent on feedback from the community. Um, without feedback, we don't know if we're doing well or not. So uh, we have a feedback page uh, for users to submit uh, feedback. You know, things are not working or things are nice. We don't get positive feedback a lot, but um, uh, we are always open to, to improving this resource as much as possible. Uh, also, um, this like Cosmos is actually uh, uh, part of the Japanese society of carbohydrate research, the JSCR. So uh, it's been recognized as its official portal. Uh, and so we have this uh, steering committee of both chemists and uh, biologists in glycosciences. So uh, we try to uh, make sure we have the accurate data uh, and user-friendly uh, interfaces uh, for the whole community. And acknowledging again, um, all the, um, my collaborators as well as advisors, uh, which also, also includes Nikki uh, and uh, the funding agencies uh, for uh, this work. Okay, and I'd be happy to take questions. We have extra time for questions. Thank you.